Welcome to the Movie Spoiler Club, the channel where you can watch movie, television, and streaming series within minutes. Today we're going to spoil the movie Fifty First Dates, 2004. This movie story plot is about Playboy vet Henry Adam Sandler sets his heart on romancing Lucy Drew Barrymore, but she has short-term memory loss. She can't remember anything that happened the day before. So, every morning, Henry has to woo her again. Her friends and family are very protective, and Henry must convince them that he's in it for love. Our story begins on a sandy beach as the sun sets on the ocean. There's a woman recanting her recent trip to Hawaii, where one woman's trip details end. A new woman's story begins. Every story mentions romantic details, with dinner, long walks, and top-notch sex. The stories begin to diverge toward their conclusion. The man is a secret spy, doesn't do cell phones or some other exaggerated excuse for their flings to end. One thing is certain, each woman had a memorable time in Hawaii. But with who? Each woman repeats the same name, Henry Roth. Henry Roth appears on screen in a red Hawaiian printed linen shirt, khaki shorts, and sunglasses. He is cutting ties with his most recent tourist on the island. He has convinced her he is his secret agent working with the CIA. Things become questionable and so Roth leaps off the dock and onto a jet ski for a quick exit. Henry seems a little sleazy, a little charming, and quick on his feet. The next time we see Henry is at Sea Life Adventure Park. Roth is a veterinarian who cares for the sea animals and creatures at the Aquatic Amusement Park. Other characters are introduced like Ula and Alexa. Ula is a close personal friend. Aunt Alexa is an assistant at work. Both are quirky and outrageous. As Henry stitches Ula's stomach wound from a shark, he recants his recent adventures with the constant flow of tourists on the island. Ula warns his friend that one day, he might find a woman that likes him so much she won't leave the island. What would Henry do when he can't rely on his tricks? Henry dismisses his friend's concern. The two are interrupted by Alexa. Alexa rushes in with a panicked expression and urges Henry to come quick. There seems to be an emergency concerning Jocko the Walrus. It's at this moment we see the full spectrum of Henry's sense of humor. Jocko the Walrus is presumably ill and needs emergency CPR. Henry reacts fast and instructs his stiff and serious assistant to crouch near Jocko's mouth while he applies pressure from the side. Three quick pumps and the walrus hurls gallons of vomit forcefully into Alexa's face. Alexa is entirely covered from head to toe in brown. Wretch puke. She leaves to clean herself up. And Henry laughs. Jocko and Henry high-five, signaling that this is a trick they have performed before. Later, Henry visits a local diner for a decent meal. Everyone seems friendly enough. The waitress, Sue, orders him some spam and eggs. While Henry waits for his food, he is distracted by a woman sitting in a booth by the window. He begins to stare and watch her intently. The woman with some bleached blonde hair that falls in windblown waves is building something with her waffles. As he continues to watch, he can see that she is building a waffle volcano. She dumps the syrup down the center of the volcano and watches the heat rise from the crest. Henry can't help but smile. The waitress and the woman share some friendly compliments which mean that she comes to the diner often. Although Henry usually looks for tourists who aren't staying very long, he can't seem to forget this woman. Unable to keep the strange and endearing woman from the diner off of his mind, he confides with Alexa. Alexa has plain features, small mousy eyes, a stern expression, and Dutch braided buns on either side of her head. A simple and direct way of speaking and inability to make everyone around her uncomfortable. Alexa sincerely wants to help Henry by unraveling his past romantic trauma and confronting his fear of commitment. Her solution for Henry? Go to Henry's office, take off all of her clothes, and wait on Henry's desk for him to use her as a sexual release. Henry is discomforted and declines by admitting that he isn't interested in men. Back at the diner, Henry decides he is going to try and meet the woman by sitting at the booth in front of her. This time she is building a waffle house. Henry notices she is having trouble with the front door. Henry steals a toothpick and sticks it through the roof and the door to create a hinge. The woman smiles kindly, and the two shake hands politely introducing themselves. Henry moves to return to his table, and the woman offers a spot at hers. There's an instant connection and the two spend the rest of the morning chatting, making jokes, and sipping their coffee. As the two gather their things and leave the diner, Lucy says that it's her father's birthday today, but she will be back at the diner tomorrow for breakfast if Henry would like to meet her. Henry is elated. It's a date. The next morning, 
Henry arrives early at the diner, Aunt Sue seems eager to talk to him before Lucy gets there. Before she has time to talk to Henry, Lucy walks into the diner and finds her usual table. Henry walks up to her table and tries to sit down but things feel uncomfortable immediately. Lucy doesn't seem to remember meeting Henry at all. Things escalate quickly and Henry grows more and more confused. Lucy cries for help. The cook emerges from the kitchen with his cleaver to chase Henry out. Sue intervenes and takes Henry outside to explain that Lucy is very different. She mentions that Lucy suffered a head injury from a car accident one year ago. The accident caused her to lose her short-term memory. Lucy relives October 13th every day since the accident. Last year on October 13th, it was Lucy's father's birthday. She met up with him and her brother, Doug, to pick up a pineapple. If they hadn't got in the accident, they would spend the day together. She would paint her father's workshop. He would watch the Vikings play on TV for dinner. They would enjoy spaghetti and upside-down pineapple cake for dessert. Every day since they recovered, they repeat the day of the car accident. At the house, the father seems helpless, and the brother feels a little exhausted from the process of resetting the day for his sister. They all have to relive the same day for Lucy's sanity. Henry is determined to try and meet Lucy again, so he tries to sit in the booth across from her. He grabs a toothpick to help Lucy with her waffle house, but this time Lucy is insulted that a stranger would touch another person's food. Plan it clearly didn't work, but Henry has other ideas. The next time Henry approaches Lucy, she pretends she doesn't speak English. The time after that, he draws a picture of a father and son on a fishing boat. Lucy isn't impressed and remains disinterested. Then he tries something new. He goes to the diner and begins to cry. Henry is pretending he doesn't know how to read in hopes that Lucy with her kind heart will help him. The plan works, and the two enjoy their second morning together. At the end of the breakfast, the two make their way to their cars. Henry smiles shyly and says see you, and Lucy is completely turned off. She blurts her upset with his behavior and drives off in irritation that she wasted her morning with a man that pretended he couldn't read to meet a girl. The waitress lets Lucy's father know there's a man that is causing a little bit of trouble for his daughter. When Henry goes to Lucy's home to explain his behavior, her father stops him and asks him to leave his daughter alone. Henry isn't one to give up easily and decides he won't bother Lucy at the diner, but he will learn her daily route and create new scenarios in which they meet. One day, he pretends to have car trouble, and Lucy pulls over to help him jump his car. Another day, he pretends there is an obstruction in the road. While she waits for the road to clear, Henry chats her up. Next time, Ula pretends to beat Henry up on the side of the road. Lucy pulls over to help and beats up Ula with a baseball bat. Ouch. Then, Henry pretends to be tied up on the side of the road. But instead of Lucy shows up, her father and brother pull up next to him. They look unhappy and ask Henry to follow them to the house. At the house, they show Henry exactly what is going on with Lucy. What is supposed to deter Henry away from Lucy makes him want to be with her more. They peek in on Lucy who is painting a mural in her father's workshop singing along to Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys. Marley asks Henry what he is getting out of that relationship, and Henry isn't sure. He thinks for a moment and is distracted by Lucy's terrible singing. He just wants to spend time with her. The next day at the diner, Lucy is about to enjoy her breakfast but notices that a police officer is writing her a ticket for expired plates on her car. Lucy is confused and angry because she doesn't know what month it is. In her mind, it is still October of the previous year. It's not until she rips a paper off the stands that she realizes that she has it all wrong. This causes Lucy to spiral out of control. Henry goes with Lucy to her home as she uncovers her past and learns everything. Lucy is distraught and decides she needs to see her doctor. The doctor tries once more to explain that her condition won't likely improve and that it could have been much worse. Henry feels determined to make it into Lucy's memory. With her family's blessing, he sets off to create videos that explain to Lucy everything she has missed in the year since her accident and other personal details of her life. After Lucy watches the video the next morning, she seems less stunned than the morning before. Henry and Lucy are kind of dating. As their 24-hour relationship blossoms, they share some moments at the tree where she had her accident. They continue to share many more evenings together on the beach. They exchange I love you, share several first kisses, and Henry even proposes. Lucy desperately wishes she had met Henry one day before her accident. They fall asleep together that night and when the morning comes, Lucy is horrified by the man next to her in bed. She screams in terror and then beats him over the head until he collapses on the floor. Henry regains consciousness and returns to work. Eventually, Lucy finds him there at Sea Life Park. He is happy to see her, 
but she doesn't seem exactly thrilled to see him. Lucy reveals that she has been keeping a journal and she wants to erase Henry from her memories. She wants to break up with Henry because there is no future with them together. Henry is heartbroken. Lucy effectively removes Henry from her day and her life, while Henry mopes around and drinks. Eventually, Henry fixes the boat and is finally going to sail off to Alaska like he planned before he ever met Lucy. He is about to set sail, but Lucy's dad and brother come to say goodbye. Marley mentions that Lucy now lives at an institution where she paints and even teaches an art class. She seems much happier there, which isn't reassuring. He has a gift for Henry. Henry waits to open the gift until he is out at sea. The wrapped present is an album by the Beach Boys. Henry is upset with the gift but continues to listen to Wouldn't It Be Nice while he screams and cries in agony over his failed relationship with Lucy. Then, he has a revelation. He thinks Lucy can remember him because her father said that she only sings when she talks to Henry. Henry races back to the dock to find Lucy. At the institution, Henry rushes through the halls trying to find Lucy. Once at the art room he reaches her while she is teaching a class. He patiently asks if she knows who he is. Lucy honestly doesn't know his name but asks if he will follow her. They both go to her private studio. There, Henry is shocked to see that she has portraits of him everywhere. She confesses she doesn't know his name but that she dreams of him every night. Lucy can remember Henry. Henry's heart swells. He smiles and tells her you're the girl of my dreams and apparently I'm the man of yours. The two smile and shake hands. They share a kiss, but then Lucy wakes from her dream in a bed. On the nightstand beside her, there is a VHS tape labeled Good Morning Lucy. She plays the tape that reveals everything that has happened to her since her accident, including her wedding to Henry Roth. The tape concludes. She takes a look outside her bedroom window and can see the ocean. Once she steps outside, Henry and their child are waiting for her. They greet her warmly. As the camera pans out to reveal they are all in Alaska, including Lucy's father. Lucy no longer leaves her life in 24 hours, and Henry is there for her each day to remind her how special their love is. Movie Trivia Do you know that the neurological condition from which Lucy suffers, Goldfield Syndrome, is entirely fictional? True anterograde amnesia affects either short-term memory, which can last minutes or seconds, or intermediate-term memory which can last days or weeks. Falling asleep has nothing to do with the condition, and sleep actually intensifies many chemical effects which help memory. This movie gets the movie rating of 6.8 from IMDb, Tomatometer rating of 45 and audience score of 65 from Rot Tomatoes. Thank you for watching and be sure to hit like, subscribe, share your thoughts in the comment section, and hit the notification bell for the new movie spoiler video every week.